Hello, my friends. This is Bobby D coming to you live from the Long Bond Single Philippines. Having an awesome time in the Philippines today. Hope you are as well. Where you're from. Hey, today I want to talk to you about six actionable car buying in the Philippines tips. Did you work like a charm? In the Philippines. <laughs> yeah, man. Six uh, car buying, actionable, actionable car buying Philippine tips that work like a charm. In the Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, what a joy. It's such a joy to come back together, my friends. And today I want to say for those of you here for the first time, click on that subscribe button for me. And uh, remember to like, share, subscribe. Uh, so you continue to see fresh new Philippine videos, motivational videos, and worldwide videos. Now, when you talk about the Philippines, you're saying this is the country where a lot of people come. And a lot of people come to live. And some people come to vacation. And some people just come to checking things out, checking things out, checking things out. <laughs> but yeah, and when the ones they come to live permanently, like yours truly, right? You want to have some time. You get tired of riding in the jeepney, you know? Well, I'm tired of being like a sardine in the jeepney. Everybody's smelling on me and I'm smelling on them. Please, ma'am, can you move over, please? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like, <laughs> And I'm tired. I got tired of that, man. So I got me a car. And like many of you, like me, you want to have your own ride. The convenience of coming and going. When you get rich, hey, okay? You need a car, man. I'm telling you, you come to the Philippines, you're going to get tired of taking them jeepneys. You're going to get tired of paying them taxi cab. I'm telling you, man, get you a car if you can't afford it, okay? Don't come out here being cheap. Get you a car. You said, well, Bobby, I'm scared to drive. I'm scared to drive. Just drive, man. It's just driving like any place else. Any place else is just a little bit more hectic because they got some unknown rules. <laughs> they got the rules of the road on the, which is in the book, right? But when you get out here, you know you throw that book out the window. Because <laughs> they, they don't do nothing like the rules, man. Everybody's like on your own. You're like, <laughs> but you get used to it. It's uh. I, talk, I call it a controlled chaos when you drive out here, but you get used to the unwritten rules. Once you get used to the un unwritten rules, then you're going to be okay driving, okay? But until you uh, get familiar with the rules, or don't get on the road until you get familiar with how people drive, okay? That's what I did. It took me, uh, once I got my license, and when you get your license, that's another thing. We're going to have some broadcasts on how to get your license. We're going to have a broadcast on how to drive out here as well. So, you guys are interested in driving. I know you like me, man. From the US, USA, I used to like, hey, man, I want to buy taking me nowhere. I drive myself. You know, you like me. If you like me, if you like Bobby D, you want your own ride, okay? I don't care what country you go. You want your own ride. Especially in the Philippines, you want your own ride, man. You got to walk and take a GV, take a tax, and then you got to walk with I'm not get you a ride, man. If you can afford it, get you a ride. We're going to talk today. But where you get your car out here, how you get your car, how you get your good deal, and what you talk, and you'll be like, ah, overload information, overload. Well, we're going to talk about this stuff. I'm a, I'm a little bit late today, so I'm going to rush this real quick. It ain't going to be long, man, because I know y'all got to go to bed, man. Some of y'all like, ah, oh, I got to speak loud to wake you up. I say, get up. You know, I'm ready. Come on, y'all. Hey, man. I know how it is, man. I know how it is. You get, you got to go to work tomorrow. You sleep your time. Bobby, you talking slow. I'm gonna speed this thing up. All right, let's go. No chit chat, today. Let's go. All right. So we're gonna look at the lady today. This is our thumbnail for the day. Ready? Come on now. Car buying Philippines. See that lady right there? She wanna save that car. She said, "Hey, hey Mister, I got an Audi for you. You think you can? Can you handle this?" He ain't talking about her, guys. She talking about the car. Get that off. Come on now. Get your mind out the good. <laughs> can you handle this? He's yeah, I can handle that. Nah, I ain't talking about the current lady, man. I'm talking about the car. All right. First point. Take a little bit of focus today. Focus today. Focus, focus today. Let's go. I'm talking to you. I'm speed this up. I know you I know you're sleeping, man. You got to go to bed. All right. We're gonna look at um, but focus will be make it make a checklist, look around, decide if the cash is loan, find the best car. Insurance test to drive the car and consider the long term cost. And then I'm gonna tell you some stuff that I did as I came out here to find my car and how the things was worked out for me. Why? Listen to me now. I'm gonna get you through here in about 10 minutes. We ain't take long on this. Watch this. Watch me. Watch me work it. Uh watch me work it. Uh who? Let's go. All right, here's number one. Number one. We said we're gonna do what? We're gonna make a checklist on what you want in the car. Whatever you want, man. Some people like uh leather seats. 
Look like the heated seats, all kind of stuff like that. If you want that in your car, get it. But you don't need all that out here, man. You got to consider where you are. You're in the Philippines, baby. It's hot out here all the time. You don't need no heated seats. And, you know, you probably don't need no leather seat because the leather going to burn your butt <laughs> in the car. It'd be so hot. You know, and the air conditioning eventually cools it off. But when you get in the car, it's hot. No leather. So you probably want to get, you know, anyway. I'm not going to. Anyway, make a list. Make a list. How many passengers you're going to be taking? Yes, you're going to be you and your lady. You got a baby. Get you, get you. You want some more space, you know? Some people need an SUV. You know? to the economy, you want economy? Like me, man, I'm like this. I don't buy no car with a big gas tank. I don't play that. I'm serious. That's how I do I'm not a big car person. If you can get, if I get a car, it's for transportation. It's not for, it's not for sporting. Some of you guys buy a car that's going to sport and get girls. I ain't playing that game, man. Get me to point A and point B and point C. That's all I care about. I don't care about the style. I like a small car. I don't want no big car with nice tires and can get me some fuel economy. That's what I look for. All right. And how much garage? If you have a big garage, you can get your big car. You got a small garage, get your small car. That's all it is. It's common sense. Will you do uh, and will you do any towing? If you tow anybody, you got to make sure you have a car that's had the right engine side that can tow. Because if you don't, you try to tow somebody with a small car, you're going to tear up your engine. <laughs> you're going to tear up the engine, man. And then you're going to tear up your tire. And the bumper might pull up. <laughs> the rear bumper might come right off. Okay, I got to feel the sneeze coming on. Uh, yeah. I think I stopped it. Anyway, all right, let's go. But um, always remember to make a checklist on what you want in the car. That's even with the USA, man. All right, next thing, number two, look around, okay? You need to check out where the car deals are. There's a place online. Anybody want to check for a car, go to Car Moody. Carmoody.com. See that at the top of the right hand corner there? Carmoody. They have good cars. They have new cars. You want a new car? And they have a used car. They all are very good. They test them out and they make sure they're running. Uh, they're, uh, if you want a used car or a new car, Carmoody is a good place to go online. Carmoody.com. Do it shopping online. You find what you want and you go down to look at man. Call them up. Say, look, you still got this available? He said, yeah, we got it, sir. You go down and check it out. Okay, Car Moody. That's that's a that's a good place to start. All right, look around for the specific car you want to buy. Shop around. Ask neighbors. Ask your friends here. Uh, look online. Like I told you, with Car Car Moody. Uh, check with people who have recently purchased. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, there's two types of purchase here that you can make. You can make a purchase from a person or a purchase from an uh, auto dealership. Okay. Uh, let me tell you about the both. When you make a purchase from a dealer, usually, usually the title, uh, insurance, all that stuff's going to be up front. You, you don't have no problem with it. Everything's going to be legit, totally 100% legit because they're governed by the what? rules and regulations of this country. If they mess you up, you can take them downtown and bust their butts with a ticket, with a big fat fine. They'll be paying you some change to change it. They don't want that, man. So most of those people, auto dealerships, you can't go wrong with them. Uh, the problem is when you buy from an individual car, listen to me now. I'm telling you, I went through the ringer, baby. I bought from an individual and I went through the ringer. Okay. I want you to do what I, I want you to go through the stuff I went through. I'm going to tell you about that later on. But like, I'm going to tell you at the last point, I, my, number seven is my take. I'll tell you my take I'm on that later. But careful when you buy from an individual. And I'll tell you the details later as I just mentioned. But uh, look around. Find the car you want, shop around, ask your neighbors, ask your friends, and uh, uh, check with the people who have just wanted. That's the most key. If you want a particular car, you see somebody with that car, say, sir, where'd you buy this car? You say, how you like it, sir? You know, ask them, man. Ask them. Say, look, man, how, how does it ride? Really? How long you had it? You had any trouble with it? Ask people, man. Talk. You got to open up, man. You will save yourself a whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of trouble when you ask people that just bought a car. You see a car looking brand new. Hey, man, I like your car. People like to talk about that car, right? People love cars. So that's, yeah, when did you buy it, man? He said, oh, man, you just got to keep pumping them. I said, man, it's gorgeous, man. I'm trying to get me a car just like that. You know we you bought it from? Yeah, yeah, okay. Did you have any problems? Who did you, who was your dealer? Who did you deal with? Yeah. Stuff like that. And then you'll they'll open up. Well, I bought this car, but it ain't worth a flip. <laughs> yo, yo. And someone like it. Yeah, man, it's the best thing I ever bought. Yo. You'll find a real deal when you talk to people, man. People who need people are the luckiest people in the world.
people need people. People like to associate. People like to communicate. And then you can open them up by questions. When you question people, they like to talk. If you question them on the right subject, you question them about, did I see you with that lady last night and your wife didn't know about it? They were like, who you talking about? <laughs> you got to run from me, man. But ask the right question on the right what topic, the right subject, okay? And you'll get some answers. Yeah, you get all the kind of answers you want. They don't, you have to shut them up. Man. That's all I need, man. I don't need, to, I don't need all that, man. I can't I, 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 like you. Bye. <laughs> you have to shut them up. All right. Let, uh, number, we got one. We got one, two, three. Number three. Number three, decide if you will pay cash or loan. Okay, you need to make that decision up front because a lot of people that come here, uh, when they first get here, you have a lot of monte, honte. Yeah, you know, you're an expat, you decide you want to live it. You come in with a wad of cash, man, and you got it in the bank. So, if you got that, when you get here and you got that money, you better make your decision quick because that money gonna start going fast. You hear me? I could tell you, I had, man, I had a ton of money when I came out here. But it took me, it started slipping away. <laughs> I still got some of it though. But it started slipping away because you have to pay. When you're not working, right? So you got to you got to use that money unless you have some. I had online money coming in. But when I first came up, my online one money wasn't enough. So I had to pinch in on my 401k. But when you come in, man, get your car. Make that one of your priorities. Get your car and a nice place to live. Those should be your two priorities when you get here. Okay. Don't talk about well, I don't know what I'm gonna do and start living in a hotel and all that. Come on, man, don't live like that. You didn't live like that in the USA or wherever country came from, right? So why are you going to come here and live in a hotel? Lose your head, Fred. Cry. Listen to me, man. I'm telling you right. Okay, decide if you want to pay cash or a loan. Paying cash helps your budget due to no financing charges. If you cash, if you pay cash, uh, you can get the best loan you can if you pay cash. But if you pay finance, you got to shop around. And what happens is if you're a Cano, okay, if you're Americano, mm-hmm, you know, Americano, you know, from the USA or you're Britain. If you're a foreigner, you try to get your loan out here. You better have some change to the change, change, change. You better have a business or you better have a whole lot of monte, monte in the bank. And you got to show them that you got that money. Because they don't like selling the foreigner, man. They don't. Unless you're paying cash, you know, that change to the change. Money talks in the BS, what? Walk, by the walk. You know, but you want to have some change to change in it. Well, you have that money, man. Hey, if you're successful, that's uh, they be they be talking sweet to you then. But you say, I need to give me a loan, sir. To, um, get to the back of the line. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like giving loans to foreigners out here. They don't like it. You can get it done, but it's gonna give you a whole lot of hassle, man. I'm telling you. So if you can pay cash for the car, you, you can cut through all of that hassle they give you, man. But if you can't pay cash, just go on in the line, get to the back of the line, like the man said, and they get to you when they can. And because a lot of times you got to go through a bank. They have in-house financing, but you definitely don't want to do that. In-house financing, finance charge is out the gahoosa, man, out the roof. You don't want to do that. So try to get you a bank loan. You can get a bank loan by going to BDO, uh, BPI, one of the major banks will, try, will finance you usually. If your finances is good, you can show them you have a lot of change to the chain in the bank. And you want to have a checking account here in the Philippines before you even go down there and try to get along. Because you got, well, I got my money here. That, yeah, that, that didn't mean nothing to them. They, they, talk, they need to see some pesos, okay? <laughs> Dollars is good, but they want to see pesos. That means you're here. You're established here. You've got a bank account. And they can rely that you will be able to pay that money on a monthly basis. Then you will say, they're going to ask you, sir, well, how are you obtaining your income, sir? You're here. Are you retired? How are you obtaining your income? Well, you say, yeah, I'm getting Social Security. And uh, Social Security, sir? Did you say, did you say, Social, did you say Social Security? Yes, ma'am. Get out. <laughs> they want income, man. They want, you have to have a business. You have to have some kind of online, uh, you want to have some online business. That when you say them that, show them that. And they, they want you, okay, sir, sure. And you can show them profit. They want to say, can you show me your bank statement, sir, from your business? Stuff like that. You got to show that you have proof of income. Now they will take the social security stuff, but that's the last thing they want to see. Okay, they want to see the income, money coming in from a, some type of uh, active or dynamic source, it's like a, a business. Something you got. You know, money coming in, regular, that's what they want to see. They'll take the Social Security if you have nothing else. They said, that's all you got? Yes, man, that's all I got. Okay, we'll see what we can do. They'll help you out. All right, so have, decide what you want to do. Uh, pay cash or a loan. Then you want, thing you want to decide is, too, do you want a new car or do you want a used car? Hmm? Used car or new car? Me, Bobby Dick. Well, this is on my take. I'll tell you on my take about that. But that's nothing you got to say. All right, let's go to the next one. 
Who was on number who was on number three? All right, number four. Let's go. Are you with me, JP? Let's go, baby. I got time to play with you. Come on, let's go. I told you I'm, a, I'm a, I know you get ready to go to bed. I don't want to hold your time. I respect your time, man. I don't want to waste your time. Let's go. Find the best car insurance. Okay. Now let me tell you about insurance out here. Okay. Insurance here in the Philippines is pretty much you pay one time a year. That's it. One time each year. And you say, well, Bobby, that's a lot of monte, man. That's a lot of monte. That's a chain to the chain chain. That's one time. I pay my monthly, man. And sometimes I pay it every three months. But Bobby, can you get that every three months, please? Sir? I no. Nah. Well, I told you what to do. Once a year. Okay. And get that in your mind. Get that in your psyche. You're not in the USA. You're not in Great Britain. You're not in France. You're not in Russia. You in the Philippines, baby. And you got to do as the Filipinos do. Okay? Once a year. Now, the good thing about it is that the insurance out here is not as high as in the USA or any other country. Very, very low prices. So you can afford to pay once a year. You know, um, I think Lisa D and I pay about five thousand a year, and that's for five thousand, not dollars, y'all, not dollars. Let me clarify that, not dollars, but five thousand pesos, and that's for full coverage. Okay, I mean, somebody hits you, you hit them, you cover. Okay, but five thousand pesos for a year, and it's about, uh, and I guess it's about hundred dollars. It depends on the, the price types of the exchange rate, but it's approximately a hundred dollars. Okay. I mean, it depends on the insurance. Also, Lisa D said it does depend on the type of insurance you get. You can get some cheaper than five thousand pesos, but it don't cover everything, you know. So it it does depend on the insurance. But I would say, for the most part, you're going to pay, probably pay for the best insurance, top of the line. You're going to be paying between five and eight thousand pesos. Okay, and that's not a whole lot of money compared. To, some people you pay. Uh, five thousand is about a hundred dollars. You pay that a month, you know. So I'm gonna pay it for the year. Hey, it's a good deal, man. I'm telling you, it's a really good deal. And right now, because we're on lockdown, you know, we can't get our tags or nothing. So we're riding on expired tags because we're supposed to renew it in May. It's June now, but everything's locked down, so nobody's giving us no tickets or nothing. Our insurance, uh, we, we still got that active, but you know, we can't get it strengthened or renewed, nothing, because it's on lockdown. So. Anyway, that's where we are right now. But yeah, insurance is cheap, man. Compared to the USA, don't worry. That's the least of your problems. Okay, you're gonna find a good. Always oh, gonna find a good insurance rate. Okay. All right. What was we on? What was we on? Number number four. Okay. Four. Open the door. Oh, uh, uh, find the best insurance rate. I told you that. Compare, compare your prices. Uh, there's a lot of people that you know. Say, Who you got your insurance with? You got you know. Just check around, and you'll find the best price for you. All right. But you get your vehicle. Right. Number five, stay alive. Test drive the car. Test drive the car, man. A lot of people, you wouldn't believe how many people get a car, buy a car. So they go to the lot. They go to the man say, look at that car. See that car right there? Yes, sir. I want that car right there. You want to drive it? No, nah, just give me a car. You, you would be surprised how many people do that. I'm telling you, man. A lot of people. Do. And some people buy it online. Just looking at the site. Just looking at it online. I want that. And they, they don't drive it. Buy, pay the money, let's go. That's it. Test drive the dog on the car, man. Use your head. Something might be wrong with the car. It might be, you might not like the, it might be, everything might be, the car might be fine. But when you drive the car, your knees might hit the stairway wheel because you're too tall. And they say, well, that's not going to fit for me. Or when you make a turn, it turns too sharp. And you don't like that. Or when you back up, there's a sound that you, you know, a lot of peculiar things. You don't like the way the, the radio is situated because you hit you and, and they have a cup holder. Hit the cup holder. A lot of things you need to check out. Just don't test drive it one time. Test drive it several times, okay? Because you need to make sure that that car is suitable and comfortable for you. You have to check the interior out. Is it leather seats or this cloth, you know, fiber? All of those things make a difference when you're driving because you're going to be driving a car for a while, man. And you want to be comfortable. You want to be relaxed. You want to feel it. Make it make so. Make sure that it's feeling good to your standards. Look at the interior for comfort. Okay. See how it turns. How the key. Sometimes the keys. People don't like how the key inserts and 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 the, the, the ignition. You know all of those little things. Quirky little things. You need to make sure that you're familiar and that those things are comfortable for you. The feel of the ride when you drive around. How does it feel? Does it feel bumpy when you hit a bump? Boom, 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 boom. You know, you feel the shocks. All those things you need to take into what consideration. And last number six, pick up your sticks. Here we go. Consider cost long term. Yeah, long term, man. 
fuel costs, how much you gonna cost me a year, your loan, if you're buying on a loan, how much my loan interest is gonna cost me, your monthly maintenance, you know, you gotta pay for the uh, tune-ups, and you gotta pay the oil and all that stuff, man. You gotta sit down, if you like me, I sit down. I get my calculator out, and I go, uh-uh, that's not gonna work for me. I, I gotta get something else. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. It suits me. It suits my budget. That's what you do. And if you can't do that, you don't not a, you're not a man with math and you don't like calculating. You don't, you don't do that. Find you somebody that can. Okay. Get you a friend. Look at me. I'm trying to buy the car. Can you sit down and see if it's going to work for me financially? Yeah. That's what you do. Don't let the, don't, but God say, don't let the salesman do that for you. Okay. <laughs> he go, he go, yes, sir. This will be good for you. Look at the savings. I missed. He done got all kind of crazy. The, the numbers he got ain't right. Then when you get your bill, I thought you said you're going you're gonna to pay me. Uh, I'm going to pay 400 a month. It's 1800 <laughs> I'm going to trade the $600. I'm going to do your own man. You can't do your man. Don't let the salesman do it for you. Okay, you're going to jack you up. Get you somebody, your friend. Okay, he's looking, man, let's go down here. I want you to help me out with the math. You know, I can't do it. I know all that. I want you to check it out for me. And just do it for you. All right, that's it, man. That's all I got for you. Now, last thing I told you was do my take. This is my take. I tell you, buying cars in the Philippines is much like buying it in the USA. However, there's a few differences. When you get uh, when you buy a car in the Philippines, you want to make sure that the car you get is suitable for the driving here in the Philippines. What you mean by they suitable? But yeah, because we're in a what hot uh, tropical climate, and the battery have a tendency to go out faster in hot climate tropical. Uh, driving okay i can testify to that and we've had our car for five years almost five years and we've had four batteries yeah it's more now. we've had a, okay she leases more about we had about we've had about four batteries since we've had our car we got our car in 2015 so 15 yes yeah, about four years huh? um five years yeah about five years anyway we've had a car for a while and we've had four batteries okay because the batteries we're out in this tropical human climate. I don't know why, I don't know how, but they wear the heck out, okay? Three, five, All right, this is four, three, Nancy, Nancy, ooh, them. tomato, tomato, who cares? Anyway, we've had multiple batteries and they wear out. They wear out. My point is that when you want to get a car that has a reliable uh, source and reliable mechanical stuff, check all that stuff online because we get, you get a car, battery, you're going to have to pick batteries big time. Make sure the car, the tires are good. Because you're riding again on a tropical high climate, you want to make sure you get the right tires. Now I can tell you this: we bought one set of tires, and we had those tires since we had the car. We just got a brand new set. You know why we have my tires so long? I rotate them bad boy. Every time we get an oil lube change, we get an oil lube change every three to four months. I rotate. It. That's how you last make your tires last. And I have an old car. I have a 2005 Honda Fit. The car runs good. You only have one major problem. It's a used car. You only have one problem with it major, and that was the AC went out. And we had to replace that. That cost about 500 US dollars. What? Okay, Lisa did say it cost about it. You sure? Okay, it was about 50,000 pesos, which is about a thousand US dollars. So it was about a thousand dollars. I mean, you know, I mean, you think about it, that's about the same amount you would, would you charge in you in the US. They put a whole new AC in. We got a brand new AC and they do the installation charter. Took about a week for them to get it done. But in USA, it'll take you about a day. Stay slow and with repairs. That's another thing. Repairs, that's another old other southern. But anyway, uh, when you buy a car, you, you, new car is the best thing you can do. Okay, if you want a car out here, get you something brand new if it's if you can. Me, I prefer, I don't buy, I brought four new cars in my life. I determined I determined I would never buy another new car. You know why? Because as soon as you drive them off the lot, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. The valuation goes down. They depreciate immediately and very, very fast. Okay. So I, when I learned that and I stopped burning that and I stopped buying me cars for cash, baby. I pay cash for all my cars or I don't buy. I will walk or I'll take a jeepney or I'll take a taxi until I save my money up to pay cash for the vehicle I want. That's what I do. Uh, so if you come to the Philippines, you're a foreigner, buy your cash car, man. Don't have to go through the loan process because they make it more stringent for if you're a foreigner to make it a loan out of here. I'm telling you now. So buy if you got like buy your good used car for like three to five thousand dollars. Okay. And that's cash. You don't have to do any monthly payments. Get you something like that. If you get a new car, you're gonna wind up paying like 
maybe four or five hundred, maybe seven hundred a month for the car. And then when you got when you look at you got a budget, you got to pay your rent, you got to pay groceries, you got a girlfriend. Buy your cash car if you can. Okay, that's my take on it. Now, when you buy a cash car, make sure that you buy it from. Try to buy it from a dealer. If you're going to buy a used car, you want to buy it from a dealer. The reason why you buy it from a dealer again because they have the paperwork verified, authentic, the title. All of that has to be legit or they cannot sell that car. Okay. Make sure you get it from a dealer. Now, and then make sure that the dealer, when they get the dealers get the car, they usually make sure that they're in tip top condition. But it's again, this is you have to do your due, due diligence as a purchaser to make sure the car is running properly. And that's even here in the USA, where you you got to make sure you're going to get your mechanics. Look at me. I want you to go down and check this car out for me. Okay. I'm thinking about buying it, but I don't want to, I don't want to put the money on until I know it's running right. You're not a mechanic, so get an expert. Pay him, pay him 100 pesos, pay him 200 pesos. Take him down there and say, look to check the car. And if he said, no, sir, this got engine problem, say, thank you, man. I don't know, give me enough, you know. If he says it's fine, you got a good deal, okay? But be smart, man. Use your head. You're in a foreign country. You don't want to be taken. You don't want to be hoodwinked. You don't want to be scammed and jammed, okay? I'm trying to help you, man. I'm trying to help you. Uh, now, what I did when I bought my car, I had, I had a brother-in-law. First of all, before let me let me give, let me back up. Before I got to the brother-in-law, me and Lisa D were trying to. We we looked in the uh, car Moody. There's a bunch of other places we looked at. Boy, we had listings of cars online. I forgot the name. Anyway, there was another place we list. We we were just going out buying it from individuals. First, we tried to buy it from some dealers. And they, they wanted us to get loan. We didn't want to pay no loans. So I said, look, man, we want pay. They want loans so they can get the what interest. They want to get that kickback. I said, man, I don't, I don't want to buy no loan loan. So I had to let the dealers go. We looked for individuals. We found individuals. And time after time, this is what happened, man. Every time we got the car that we like, he said, let's see, okay, I'm ready. I checked it out and everything, make sure everything was working. Uh, driving car, tires were good, radio, stereo, uh, CDs, everything worked. But, I said, look, sweet. I test drive it. I said, look, sweet, real good, man. How much you want? And I, this price was right. I said, let's let's go ahead. You got the title. Um, um, my my mama. That's my mama car. I mean, wait a minute, man. I mean, you you said it was your car. It's not your car. It's your mama car. Okay. Does she? Is your mama sell? Did your mama know you're selling the car? Stuff like that happens every freaking time. We try to get from an individual, man. And we did that. We went through the same scenario. Or at least six people we tried to get the we saw good cars we wanted and it wasn't their car or if it was their car they did not have the title okay because here you have to have the title to get a transfer they didn't have the title we couldn't deal i said man and, but they still want you to buy what they do out here is this somebody will sell you a car and know it's not theirs they would say you paid them the money and they gone and you got the car but it's not in your name because you didn't ever got the title they do that a lot i don't want to get messed up like that and then soon as somebody said Come and get that car. That's my car. Well, I paid. I paid. You who got the title, sir? You know, it is not your car. You get jammed. So that's what they were trying to do to us. Jam me and Lisa D up when I knew where they were coming from. I said, nah, we ain't playing that game. I said, we just gonna wait. And lo and behold, my brother-in-law, Ronnie, he had his boss, right? He worked for, he was a driver for this really rich Filipino. He didn't want, they were selling one of their cars. And Ronnie said, hey, Bob, hey, he said, this car is good, man. I've been driving it. I'm this. He's like a chauffeur for the rich family, right? He said, "I've been driving it all the time, man. It drives good." He says, "It's it's feeling good. The engine's good. There's no uh, problems that I could detect." He said, "You check it out, man." I said, "Are they selling?" He said, "Are they want a loan all that good?" He said, "No, nah, man. You they they're not. That's a good price. They had a good price on it, and it was within my budget." So I checked it out, man, and uh, I had I found a few problems that I did not want. And then like. Um, the one problem with the tire was about ball. <laughs> the tire, man, man, you trying to sell about the ball tire? I said, look at man, I ain't playing that game. So we got that straightened out. And then the other thing was the windows. They had automatic up and down, you know, choo, 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 up and down windows. The back one wouldn't work. I said, hey. I said, I like the car. It looks good. I checked the engine. I don't see any leak. It was clean. This it was clean. It's very clean because they didn't ride it all the time. And I said, I said, I like the car, man, but you got you got to make some changes. I said, I'm not going to buy a car with bald tires on it. So they changed it, got the tires changed. It wasn't new tires, but it was better than one they had, right? And so I, I got that, and then fixed the back window. Everything else was fine. So we bought the car cash. Now, when you buy a car cash in the Philippines, you have to go to a lawyer. It's different from the USA. You just go to the title, to the uh, state uh, 
tag place and send it and sign your name and they get give it to them and then do uh but here you got to go to a lawyer and you have to get uh the title notarized okay it has to be legally done and you have to pay that lawyer some change of change 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 and then when you get that done then you sign it over to the person you're giving it to and it puts because it's already lawyers already got everything in their name and you just sign your part and give it to us so that we have to wait for them to do that because his boss was legit we knew he was legit and we knew he had the authentic and verified title so that's how we got over from these shade tree people trying to jam us up. Uh, it's a lot of them like that, man. I don't want to see you get messed up. I didn't get messed up because I'd be like, what? I check everything out. I don't play no game. When you when you talk about my change to the chain, 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 my monte, monte, my money, hey, I'll be, I'm on it, man. You will get my money unless I'm expecting, I'm doing spec the gadget. What you trying to do? I make sure it's right. Before I depart from any change to the chain, chain, chain out of my pocket. Because I work hard for my money. I know you do too. I work 40 years, man. I put my 40 in and I work hard for my mom. I don't want nobody playing with me, game with me. And so you the same way. I know you are, because we like that, right? We like that, man. We like that. Yeah, you know, better be. If you ain't the same way, you better be the same way. Nobody take no money. Like you work hard to get it. And you're like, I'm scammed. No, you scam me, man. We're going to be some trouble. <laughs> you will be some trouble. You remember when Bernie Mac said trouble, I'm dead straight up bull? You're going to be some trouble with me. <laughs> That's my body. Anyway. But that's it, man. I just want to let you know you can't get a vehicle here. It's similar to the process, you said, but there's some few variations, but you can do it. Okay. And, and then next time, I might talk about uh, how you get your license out here and how it is to drive out here. Uh, it's it's a it's an experience to drive in the Philippines, to say the least. Okay. It is. Uh, you ever been to uh, New York City or Washington D.C.? You know how they drive out there. Crazy, crazy. You know how they drive. Hey, multiply that times 20, and then you'll see how it drives out here in the Philippines. Okay, that's the way it is, man. But guess what? You can get used to it. Yeah, because once you know what to do and how to do and what to look out for, you're going to be fine. Okay, don't go just, yeah, I can't drive. I didn't drive too fast. The only place, I'm going to tell you straight up, I drive to I drive Cebu all day long. When it comes to Manila, Manila, the thriller in the Manila, nah. I ain't playing that game. <laughs> that's, the, that's the craziest driving I've ever seen. I'm not going to drive in Manetta. Nah, I'm not. And the reason why, I like Manila has a lot of trains. So you can just trade the train, bus to get anywhere you want. There's no use to, there's no really reason to have a car in Manila. Here, there's no trains and very few buses. So you need a car or you take the jeepney or you take the uh, taxi. And I, I don't like doing that. So I bought a car. But Manila, I would not drive in Manila. There are maniacs out there, man. I'm telling you. Anyway, that's it, man. It's all I got for you, man. It's all I got for you, man. You good? You good? <laughs> yeah, I know you good. Hey, but you have questions when we go through the roll call. Put your question on the roll call, okay? We'll get you, man. Hey, I ain't going to take long today because I know you can get ready to go sleep. Like, ah, I love you all, man. That's okay. Hey, I respect your time, man. I'm sorry I was late today, but I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to rush through this. Pop. All right, let's go. People get ready. Whether the train is coming, don't need no ticket. I just get down, boy. All you need is love. Woo! Sweet, sweet love. Don't need, don't need no ticket. I just get down, boy. Get down, boy. Yeah! <laughs> all of that song. Ah, what I say? Y'all ready to ride all aboard? Y'all ready to ride a little train? Are oh, you ready to ride a little train, man? Let's go. You ready? Bro, Kyle. Time for the roll call. Y'all ready for the roll call? Let's go. Ready, ready, here we go. One, two, three. Ready, ready, here we go. I've got to find out who the first man up in the his house. When I said two, two, you said all aboard. Two, 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 two. When I said all aboard, you said two, two. All aboard. All aboard. All aboard. All aboard. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, we're going to ride and train today, man. And we ain't playing. We ain't taking no prison. Y'all ready? Everybody be ready. You got to have some love in y'all. You don't need no Monte, Hante. You just need some L to the O to the B E. E, love, baby. Sweet love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not sup just for one, but for everyone. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not just for one, but for everyone. We don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. 
I can go on and on. I love that song. All right, let's go. Who's the first man up in this hit? Can you tell me, please, who is the first man up in this hit house? I got to know. I need to know. The choir of mine got to know who is that first man up. Who that said they're going to beat them? Say, who that? Who that? Who that said they're going to beat them? I need to know. Let me find out. Who that first man? You got to be strong enough. You got to be buff enough. You got to be roughed up enough to be the first man in the House. Who is that man? Who is that mass man? Who that say they gonna beat them? I need to know, man. Come on, now. the choir man wants to. Lamar Taylor, Lamar Taylor, Lee, Lee, Lamar Taylor, the first man up in the hip house. Congratulations to your mom. Yeah, you mean he had the dubious distinction of being the first man up in the hip house. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Glad you made it to the top, cause the cream always rises to the top, baby. Yeah, you have that top down view. You look from the top down. You can say, okay, look at them ants trying to get up here. <laughs> you can call them ants cause you in the top, baby. Yeah, they trying to get where you are. It's okay, man. Hey, I don't like to be last, man. Don't, I don't know, I don't wanna be last in nothing I do, man. Give me to first, one, two, or three, I'm all right with that. Anything other than that, uh-uh, no, nah, I'm not going to get in it. Because when I get in it, it's to win it, baby. Okay, I'm going to the top. And if you don't want to go to the top, get off my train. Because we are we are top-level people on this train. Right? Are you riding with me today? Let's ride, baby. The mom said, good morning, Bobby. Hey, good morning, Lamar. <laughs> Y'all know what I was working with. I go to the office, man. I just check in the office. Every so I, the reception said, good morning, Bobby. Look at her. Morning. <laughs> I'm coming to good morning to me. Come on, man. Ain't no good morning. That's a morning. <laughs> That's all about. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see ya. Round train, Bobby Lizzie. One nation, one love. Under our group. What we got? Look at, look at. Red Dale Cole get there. What's up, Red Dale? Blue Ranch in the house. Blue Ranch in the house. Blue Ranch in the house. What's up, man? Yeah, right. good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see ya. He said, hello, good people. What's up, man? Yeah. When they got a lady on the side, you cannot wait to get back to see a lady, man. He said, man, I can't wait, man. He said, I talk to her all the time, but hey, I need to be here. I need to be on the side, man. I need to hold her hand and give her a big, big hug and a kiss, man. Just to let her know that I want to be with her, man. And it's this, this lockdown stuff killing me, man. I know, I know, man, I know. And they put us back. I tell y'all, did I tell y'all? They put us back on ECQ? Yeah, the second time. This is easy. We are in the middle. Cebu City is in the middle of ECQ2, baby. Yeah. Second time. And you know why they put us on ECQ again? Because people up here is hard-headed, man. They don't listen. You know what they don't listen? They don't do social distancing. They, there's a curfew here. Everybody had to be in the house at 8 o'clock. Oh, we got little kids out here, man. In our neighborhood, they come, they go to bed at 11 o'clock. They come out to play at 8. <laughs> they, don't, they don't obey the rules. And that's why the COVID-19 is going up. Everyone is supposed to be in their house at 8 p.m. No later than 8 p.m. We got little kids come out of the house at 8 p.m. I'm talking about six, seven, eight, nine year old kid, and you're running about lounge. I said, Oh Lord, I be praying, man, because I said, Lord, please don't help. please don't make these children get sick. Please let please keep these children from getting COVID because they're not social distancing. They're coming together socially, whether they're going apart. And adults are saying they've got girls sitting sitting out the house. You know, in the Philippines, what they do here. They like to socialize, man. They come together. We got adults sitting out of the house, up on each other, playing cards, drinking. You know, people need to learn. You can't do that stuff. That's why the COVID is spreading in Cebu City. They hard headed and they don't listen. That's what's going on. Round train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Who we got? Frederick Mason. What's up, Frederick? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. He said, good morning, Bobby and Lizzie. Good morning. What's up? What's up? What's up? Good morning, good morning Freddie. Perry Mason never lost a case, man. Y'all know what I call him, right? Perry Mason, man. He never, he's always on it. He ain't never lost a case. Ain't nobody gonna get over on Frederick Mason. He don't play that. Ain't that right, Lizzie D? Wrong moose. She said, wrong moose breath. <laughs> hey, Lizzie, Hello. Lizzie trying to be tough with me, man. She said, wrong moose breath. <laughs> Who we got? Look at the PMG 2007. Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? We got uh good morning, Bobby D. Lizzie. I ride a love train. Yeah, man, we ride a train today. To the to the till we get off the track to the wheels come off the track, baby. We ain't playing. You think we playing? Watch me. Watch me work it. Uh watch me work it. Uh let's ride, baby. Who we got? Ride a train, Bobby D. Lizzie. One nation, one under love, one groove, baby. One nation, one love, under the groove. What's up? 
Frederick Mason, he never lost a case, Perry Mason. He said, what's going on? Wendell can't get it. What's up? Mm -hmm. I told his brother. He said, what's up, man? Blue Red in the house. What's up? What's up? What's up? He said, uh, Red, you know, Graham. Red, you know, Graham. Red, you know, Graham. Around training, Bobby Lizzie. One Nation. What's up, Red, you know? He said, good morning, Bobby Lizzie. Good morning, good morning Red, you know? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. You all right, man? I ain't seen you in a while, man. You good? You good? Good to see you, man. Around training, Bobby Lizzie. One Nation. Wendell Cognette, Wendell Cognette. He said, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good, Fred. What's up, man? What's up with you, Fred Sanford? <laughs> What's up? What's up? I'm not trying to this day. One Nation, PMG, 2007. Paul. Paul. What's up, Paul? He said, I'm going to start renting a car later, buy a car on installment new. Okay. I hear you, man. Um, that's another option I didn't mention. You can rent a car. And uh, a lot of people rent cars on a weekly or sometimes monthly basis, but actually it's, it's more it's more uh, costly that way. But I never I have rented a car here. I'll tell you why. Give me give me let me see. What? Talk to people. I'm sipping. Okay, I rented a car one time here. We went to uh, we had to go to Mendelian. That was my first year here when I got here. Right? I, actually, I, I know the specific date. It was January one. 2015. Okay. Uh, we wanted to go to Lisa D's mom and dad house in uh Medellin. That's about, about a three hour drive from me, right? And so I said, I I said, I, we, it was a holiday. I said, she said, let's find somebody. To, I said, find somebody. I said, we need to rent a car. I'm tired of paying these people. I said, let's rent a car. So we rented a car, man. And so uh she showed she tried to tell me how to get to her place, right? I next, thing, <laughs> next thing you know, man, this is D had me riding down a one way street. <laughs> I said, You sure this is the right way? She said, Yeah, just go right down there. I went down there. And next thing you know, guess what happened? The patrolman came and said, He says, Pull over. <laughs> I said, What you mean? He said, Pull over, sir. <laughs> I got my first ticket on the Philippines on January, New Year's Day, called Lisa D. Lisa D, she told me to go down. I said, you sure, Lizzie? I mean, they had no sign. There was no sign showing one way, nothing there. Well, oh, I would have known this. I couldn't look for the sign. There was no sign. You have to know what is a one way street. I said, Officer, I didn't know this was a one way street. He said, That's not, that's not, that's not my problem, sir. <laughs> I don't say, please, I don't want no ticket. I just got it. Can you give me a break, please? I said, I'm a foreign man. I, I just rented this car today, sir. Please, please, sir. Please, can you help me out, please? He said, No. <laughs> you gave me a ticket, yeah, man. Yeah, because there's, there's a CCTV. <laughs> yeah, it was a camera out there. If it wasn't for that camera out there, I probably would have gave him a little change and change, change, change. He would have wrote that ticket up, pulled that ticket up. But it was a CCC camera that showed everything. So he had to give me a ticket. Man, I was, ugh. And then we, <laughs> then we drove to Medellin. It was a three-hour drive. And, man, that was how I learned how to drive in the Philippines. It, it, I was like, I was just <laughs> yeah, because I was scared, man. People drive crazy. You know, like when you're driving a car, right? You driving a car on your side of the lane. They and this car coming this way, right? They coming towards you on your side of the lane. I'm like, what's the car? Pop, 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 pop. And they wait till the last minute till they turn back off. I don't know why they do that. I think it's sometimes they try to scare you. Well, I don't know what it is, bluff it. I don't know what it is, but you have to watch out for that. They do that a lot out here, man. And that's just one of the things they do. Anyway, let's keep going. Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Remember, hey, what's up, Murphy? He said, uh, hi, Bobby Hello, Lizzie. Two, two, let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. Yeah, let's do this thing. Frederick, Frederick Mason, what's up, Frederick? He said, PMG 2004. What's up, Paul? What's up, man? What's up, what's up, what's up? Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Terry. Terry Fleming in the his house. Terry Fleming doing the thing right, doing the thing long, doing the thing strong, doing the thing tight. Good to see you, Frederick. He said, Time Terry? to ride. I mean, uh, Terry. <laughs> he's a time to ride. Thank you so much. Terry Fleming's the man. You know hear I me? Mean? He always giving gold and he give almost every day. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you, Terry. We appreciate you, man. You a real, real subscriber and a real good man. We appreciate you. Everything you do. Let's give Terry Fleming, Dan, Ryan Train, Bobby, Lisa D, One Nation under a good hey. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the original players. Come on, people the players. Gone's in the house. I said you're gone to the house. You're in the house. I said you're in the house. Come on, girl, let's do the penguin.
Thank you so much, Terry. Thank family. you, Terry. Appreciate you, man. You are much appreciated. Much love to your brother. Ryan Chain, Bobby Lisi. One Nation, one love. Who we got? Look at, look at. PMG 2007. Oh, one more call. He one said, call. Uh, go ahead, read it. I'm going to start my renting a car. Then when I stay in the Philippines for a while, buy a car on installment new. Do not want to deal with scam taxi public transport. And you write about that. I don't want to deal with that public transportation, that jeepney, that taxi. They can keep that stuff. I want my own car. You hear me? I got me a used car and it runs. You hear me? I mean, sure it runs. The only problem, we had one problem with it. That was the uh, AC. It went out, man. And, you know, I, we, would th we were debating about getting another car then. But I said, look, man, we get another car. We just gonna take that much money and then uh, make sure it's running. I said, we know what we know the problem, the one we got. It's just the AC unit. And so we paid a thousand dollars to get it fixed, replaced. And it's been running like a charm ever since. So we, we put a lot of money. The money we put on it in on this used car, we've gotten that money out and then some. I think how did we pay for that car? Three, uh, 150,000 pesos. No, two, and, almost two hundred, almost two hundred thousand pesos we paid for the car, which is good. You know, it's about what? Five, it's about what four thousand, four thousand, mm. about four thousand dollars, almost four thousand dollars. It was a good deal. I mean, in the car, we've gotten that four thousand dollars and then some. So, if you want to get new, get new. Some people don't like used cars, and that's okay. That's your thing. That's your thing. Some people like used cars, and that's your thing. That's your thing. Whatever floats your boat, whatever you're comfortable with, uh, you can get what you want out here. Um, when you're a foreigner and you're trying to deal with these dealers. They're going to try to get as much money out of you than, as they can because they know you got it. Uh, one of the things that you can do in the USA is haggle. I'm going to try to get them to reduce the price. When you go to a new car, ain't going to be none of that. <laughs> They're going to tell you, sir, this is the price. You want to pay it? Pay it. You don't? Get it. That's what they do. You know, they don't haggle with the new car. Now, with the used cars, you have some leeway, okay? And especially, particularly if you're buying it from an individual. You can, you can say, listen, man. This I think that's too high. Can we go down a little bit? You can you can negotiate with the individuals, but with the dealers, it's very little lay, very little little leeway for negotiations. Okay, Ryan Train, Bobby Lisi, One Nation. Who we got? Lisa. Reg Gray. What's up, Reg? He said, Bobby, I will be uh, retiring there, so I better go get me a car. Yeah, man. I mean, you you need to when you come here, have enough cash. If you want to buy cash, have your car money ready cash. If you don't want to buy cash, then you have all your paperwork showing your uh, income statements, all like that. You want to get a loan. But before you get a loan out here, you're going to have to be living out here for at least six months before we're going to start that stuff immediately. Give yourself some time to show that you have a, a living history history record here in the Philippines and you have your ACIR card. You need that whether you buy used or whether you buy new. You need your ACIR card. ACRI. ACI. AC. R. Alien certificate, which is AC, registration, which is R. I stands for identity card. Alien certificate of registration identity card. ACRI card. Y'all remember that? Remember the video I did? You need that card because they won't deal with you. And when you can't buy a car here, you can't get a checking account, and you can't do much of nothing without that card. You need that card. And to get that card, you have to be here at least three to six months before you can get that apply for that card. Right? Ryan Train Bobby Lee's in One Nation. PMG, what's up, Paul? He said, uh, Frederick Mason, what's up, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Frederick Mason, what's up? He said, my baby, what up, dude? What it do? <laughs> what it do? Uh, Paul, he said, uh, what's up to the Blue Ranch crew? Hey, Blue Ranch, <clears throat> hoorah. What's up, Blue Ranch? Y'all like? It? Good to see, good to see. Murphy, you there. Murphy, he said, <laughs> Frederick Mason, it do good, bro. bro. <laughs> Frederick Mason, he said, just on a live train all aboard. Lisa D, you gotta get an accent, man. Huh? You gotta do, you gotta do the USA accent. Can you do the USA accent? No. Say, okay, I'm gonna show you. Frederick Mason. I have my originality. <laughs> yeah, but when you when you read, you got to read like the USA people read. Look at, he said, Frederick Mason. Frederick Mason. Is it just on the love train yeah. all aboard? Two, two. Let me say it. Say it. Better make it. You just don't stop change all the board to <laughs> <laughs> Oh, at least, at least she tried, right? <laughs> <laughs> she tried. Ryan Trey Bobby Lisa D One Nation. Terry Flynn. What's up, Terry? Terry Flynn. He said, soon as my decision from VA comes in, 
I'm on the look on the first thing smoking towards the village. I hear you, man. <laughs> so you waiting on that VA check. Okay. Now, let's pray for Terry Fleming to get that check, y'all. I hope he gets it. Cause the more money, the more money you have out here, the better off you're gonna be. If you're retired out here, always come with more money than just enough. You wanna that's what I did. It took me five years. I could have did it before, I could have did it uh before those five years, but I chose, I said, look, I got enough, but I want more than enough. You know, okay, I want enough. But not enough for me. <laughs> don't don't believe nothing she said. I said, well, wait. I said, I got enough, but I want more than enough. I want an abundance. When I come out anyway, we but nothing. So I worked five years to have that abundance feeling to be like, okay. So well, yeah, man. And I still got some of that money right now. Ryan Train Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Murphy, hey, what's up, Murphy? He said, What up, Paul and the Blue Ranch crew? What's up? What's up? What's up? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Mason, he said, Glad to see my ranch ranch brothers on the train. <laughs> Did you say ranch or or nah, I ain't gonna say that? Right, check my release one nation. Uh, Where's your mom ranch? <laughs> Let me see. And Terry Fleming he said, uh, y'all blue ranches on point, ready to tighten them up. Uh, nutty buddy buddy. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I remember my mama, man. God bless her soul, man. She raised me and she praised me. <laughs> yeah, that's what my mama did. She raised me and she prayed because she said, Bobby, don't let nobody say you can't do nothing. She says, you can do anything you want to do. Anything that white folk do, get your mind right and you can do it just like them. They said, whenever you get into a job, Bobby, you get your work from white folk, make sure you do it better than them. I said, what, why I got to do better? Because they, they think you can't do it in the first place. So make sure you do it better. Always do twice as good as they do. And they, they can't say nothing and they can't fight you. I said, okay, okay, mom. But well, I love my mama, man. And she knew she tell me whenever she see me uh, messing up, she didn't buy me. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, tighten it up. I said, what you mean, mama? She said, tighten it up, son. I said, ma'am, mom, what you talking? She said, you know what I'm talking about? Tighten it up. And then I knew what she was talking about. I was trying to fake like I had dog. Because <laughs> every time she see me slipping, like uh, when I was supposed to go to work and I wouldn't go, cause I, was, uh, I take it, I was like, I call her sick and stuff. She said, Bobby, tighten it up, son. I said, what you mean, mom? I'm sick. She said, you ain't sick. Tighten it up. <laughs> said, you sick with a trick. Ryan Train, probably needs even one nation. Remember, hey, what's up, Mervyn? He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to hire a driver with my eyes. Side, I'll run into everything. <laughs> yeah, you be looking at the girl, man. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> Lady yeah, driver. That's another thing. Murphy just mentioned about a driver. A driver in the Philippines is in USA. It's called a chauffeur, right? But in the Philippines, they call them a driver. The same thing. They do this everywhere. They drive the family or uh, individual anywhere they want to go. And they're on call 24-7. But usually they have, they work from 8 to 5 or something like that. But if the driver has to go someplace special, they have to come and get them. Sometimes the drivers live with the people in their stay houses. In. They stay in there 24-7. Sometimes they don't. They come to work like a regular job and they go home after certain hours. Okay? But the drivers out here... Uh, you know, you can pay them for good, cheap money, man. And it, out here, the money you pay them is big money. But in the USA, it's cheap. A driver, you can pay a driver about three thousand, four thousand a month, and that's good money for them. Okay, but in the USA, no. Huh. This for a maid. I'm sorry, I got it mixed up. A maid is about three thousand a month. A driver, I'm just driving this year. At the minimum, if it is daily. Minimum here, I think it's 400. 400. Something. So 400 pesos a day at five days a week. That's about 2,500. Put about 2,000 pesos a, a, a week. So that's still cheap, man. 2,000 pesos a week. 2,000 pesos is about 40 bucks, something like that. So it's still cheaper than what you would pay in the USA for a show. 4,000 is 100 or 80 dollars. Okay. Lisa, okay, Lisa, let's move on. We don't need to be. She always trying to get a calculator. Yeah, she wants. She she's precision. She has a precision mind, <laughs> and I have a sharper mind than hers. Yeah. In certain areas, Ryan Trey, Bobby and Lizzie, One Nation, John Thomas. What's up, John? Hello, John. Say, good morning, Bobby and Lizzie. Hey, good morning to you, good John. Morning, always good to see John. John ain't never he ain't never missed the show, man. That's his no, that's his claim to fame. Yes. <laughs> that John claimed the fame riding a train. He never missed the show, and he ain't gonna never miss no show. As long as we can, as long as he can help it, as long as we can pray for John, John gonna be all right. Ryan Train by release the one nation. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, do the right, do the tight, do the long, and doing the strong. Thank you so much, Reggie. Good to see you, man. Hey, man. 
Reggie done moved on up. He's in the, in the what color that leaves the orange. Yeah. He's in the orange realm, man. You said gold. That's orange right there. Now, the other <laughs> one was gold. This is orange. Reggie was doing the orange color, y'all. When you get in the orange, you're going up, 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 baby. Riding train, Bobby D. Lee's D. One Nation on the glue. Look at, look at. We got to do a dance for Reggie, man. We want to do it right, tight, long, and strong. Right? Let's go, Lisa. The hardest working man in the business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had too much tuba this morning. That's what I think. Thank you so much, Reggie. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Reggie. You're much appreciated, sir. We appreciate you. Always giving. Reggie has a good heart, man. I'm telling you, man. That's how we got people on this program. With good hearts, good minds, good spirits. And they, when you have, when you're good, people see that goodness and you attract. We good attract good. Like attracts like. That's all it is, too. Ron Train, Bobby and Lizzie, One Nation. Eddie Jackson, what's up, Eddie? Hello, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Ride train, Bobby D. He said, Bobby D. and Lisa D. On a All love right. train. <laughs> On a love train. What's up, Eddie? Good to see you, man. Ride train, Bobby D. and Lisa D. One Nation. Who we got? Look at, look at. He said, Little, Little mm. Red Corvette. Little Red Corvette. Remember that? That was a Prince song, I think. Yeah, man. Prince, man. Prince was, he was good in the day, but uh, he got hooked up with them drugs, man. I didn't actually, to be honest with you, man. I didn't never knew he was on drugs. He never had, I never, I thought he was a little weird. You know, he was, I think he was a little, had some sugar in him. You know what I'm saying? When I got, when he had some sugar in him, he was like Michael Jackson with some sugar in him. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, I never did think that Prince had uh, any drug connection at all. I just thought he was a little weird. I mean, he was a musical genius. Of course, everybody knows that. But uh, when he died and he was overdosed, I was like, wow, Prince? Man, I grew up with Prince, man. I grew up with this song, you know? Purple Rain, you remember Purple Rain? Purple Rain, Purple Rain. Now, he won an Oscar for that song, man. Prince was a musical genius, and he died too soon, just like Michael. Ride Train, Bobby, and Lizzie, One Nation. Who we got? PMG, 2000. Poor, what's up, poor? He said, uh, Murphy Hayes, what's going on? Driving in the Philippines is not that bad. Just use the USA style drive, and be okay. Yeah, man, driving in the Philippines, what I had to do, man, be honest with you, be honest with you, Paul, I had to let that USA style go out the window. Because <laughs> the people out here drive Filipino style. Now, I'm telling you, when I, when I, I taught Lisa D how to drive, I taught her to drive two ways. The first way I taught her how to drive was American style, okay? She didn't like that. She went, I can't come here and do this. I can't do Because she was used to seeing how Filipinos drive, right? So it took her a while to learn how to, she learned it. But it took a while to learn how to ride Americans. I said, now nah, you know how to ride American style. Okay. Now I need you to ride Philippine style. She called Philippine style like that. Bam. <laughs> she called they drive crazy because they lazy. <laughs> and when you try, you better, you better be careful about the motorcycle the riders. Yeah, you have they to. They'll get in and out. Yeah, the motor, motorcycle riders. Like in the USA, you ride a motorcycle and you ride with cars, right? You stay in your lane and you're just like a vehicle, regular car. But not here in the Philippines. They don't ride like a vehicle. They don't stay in their lanes. So if you're riding down the road like this, a motorcycle's on the side of you. They'll go right in front of you riding, right? You will almost hit them. And they'll go right in front of the other car, almost hit. They just do in and out, in and out. And then they ride on the side. You can barely see them. They're so close to you because you can't see them in the mirror. So it's, they have so many motorcycle accidents because they take a lot of chances in and out, riding in and out of these cars. So that's the main thing you have to learn how to deal with when you get out of here is the motorcycle drivers. They cause a lot of accidents. And if you hit them, you're a foreigner, guess what? You think it's their truck? You think it's their truck? They're part of it? Whether you're right or whether you're wrong, you're going to get some 
money. You have to pay some change to the change to change. You got to pay for the medical. It's your fault. That's your fault. Just because you got the money, Hunter, it's your fault. I don't know why it is. They have a double standard. But if you hit somebody out here and you American, you better get ready to go in your pocket or you're going to do some time. Right, Chain Bobby, at least one nation. Frederick Mason, he said, what's good? What, what's the good? good Eddie, Eddie Jackson. Jackson. How you doing, buddy? You all right? Remember, hey, what's up, Mervyn? He said, it's a big deal for me, Paul. I have vision. Pro okay, if you got vision yeah, problems. Yeah, you need a lady, you're gonna lady need, yeah, driver. You're going to need a lady. You're going to need you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about a lady now. <laughs> you already got a lady. But you're gonna need, you probably need a driver or either just take taxes. I mean, it's going to cost you a little more, but, you know, why take yeah, the risk? Um, what is that? Vihar, you can't grab. Yeah, you can get a grab taxi. In the long run, it's going to cost you more, but hey, it's better for you to get driving where you got to go. If you got some vision issues, you don't want to cause no problem, just get your, get your grab. You'll be all right. Right, train Bobby D. Lee's in one nation. Eddie Jackson. Hey, Bobby D. What you know about this? Diamond mm -hmm. in the back, sunroof, top, digging the scene with the gangster link. <laughs> hey, know that, man. hey man, that was my groove back in the day, baby. I know about that song, man. And then you know, know who popularized this song? Uh, who's the guy name? Who's the guy name? Uh, 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 man, the guy named uh, mm, 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 mm. Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence popularized that song, man. I saw him on the show, one of the show TV. You remember Martin Lawrence show with your name and all that? He said, "Diamond." They had this. Had, oh, this this the episode. I want y'all, everybody. Go on YouTube today, all right? When you get to go on YouTube, look for Martin Lawrence, the, the, the show, the episode called The Player's Ball. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> well, you see that episode? That's the episode they would, everybody, every player was trying to be the king of the player's ball. And Martin, Martin Lawrence got to say, uh, Sun on top, a diamond in the back, sun on top, digging the scene with a gang's knee. And he held his hand out like this. Everybody said, <laughs> they do the song, man. When you know the song, you go, you gonna do that <laughs> on the end, man. And you know who sang that song? Who can, who, who can tell me who made that song? Who made the song? Y'all don't know. Man, I got to tell y'all everything. Do I have to tell y'all everything? Curtis Mayfield made the song, man. That was not it. Curtis, hey, Curtis Mayfield was a musical genius, man. He died too soon. He got hit. He was on the stage and he fell or something and the stage collapsed and he, he was paralyzed from the neck down from that mm -hmm. point on and he was in a coma he, you know he was laid in the bed for the last few years of his life and then he just died man he made the coolest song man straight up cool song he won an oscar too i think he won an oscar for uh what do you want an oscar for superfly i don't know let's go right train by lizzie one nation and again what's up daddy he said Freddie mason what's going on my brother great to see you this evening Ride train, Bobby D. Lizzie, One Nation. Crook oh, Mark. Mark. Oh, crook Friday. Right good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see ya. He said, What's going on in this little train, man? We're here, man. We're doing good. We're on lockdown, Crook. We're on lockdown again. We're on lockdown ECT, ECQ2. That's what we're on. ECQ2. Second time. They said the second time is a charm. I don't know about that, man. I was doing good when we had GCQ because we could go play. Now we can't go. We locked down. We got an eight o'clock curfew. 8 p.m. You the curfew is from 8 p.m. to what, 5 a.m. Yeah, 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. You had to 5 be 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. You have to be in your house. And people here don't obey the law. Somebody got locked up the other day. Lisa, she said this guy was outside his house after eight o'clock. The popo <laughs> came drinking. up. Drinking. <laughs> drinking. You know that's one of the pastimes here in the Philippines. People just sit and drink after after they get out of work. Hey, man, let's go and get some coffee. They buy they buy a fifth. You know, they buy a half pint, sit down there, and live, 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 live. that's what they do. And so they got there chilling. Popo came and said, hey, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all crazy? Give me key locked them up. <laughs> Come in, bye. They broke the curfew. Ryan James, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Freddie Mays, what's up, Freddie? He's a Jerry Freeman. Exactly what we do. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what we do. Ryan James, PMG, he said, Murphy, hey, yeah, might be best for you to have a drive. Yeah, man, Murphy, just get you a driver, man. And you don't have to have a driver full time. You just get a drive. There's people, that, when you say, I need to go so-and-so, you just text them, and they'll come and pick you up. You don't have to deal with no taxi people. Just get you a driver. Then you know that person will pick you up every time you call them. There's people out there will do that for you, man. I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. Ride train, Bobby and Lisa D. One nice crook bar. What's up, crook? He said, what say you, Bobby and Lisa D? What's cracking? Lacking. <laughs> <laughs> you cracking, man. Are you lacking? <laughs> <laughs> Ride train, Bobby and Lisa D. One nation. 
Freddie Mason, what's up, Freddie? He said, Eddie Jackson, the wise, my brother. Hell, man. Likewise. He said, likewise, my brother. Likewise. Yeah, man. Around the train, Murphy. Hey, he said, Eddie Jackson, don't forget the shag carpet. Oh, man. Do you remember, remember the shag carpet? You know, shag carpet, that was back in the day, man. You remember shag carpet? You've been back there, man. Shag carpet was about this. You remember flat carpet, right? Then he came up with the shag, and it was about this high. <laughs> it looked like grass. But, uh, that overgrown grass, you had to cut it, but it was nice back in the day. You can't, when you see that shag carpet now in somebody's house, they old, man. <laughs> they old as <laughs> dirt. You don't see that down there. Ride train, Bobby DDG, One Nation. Crook Mark, what's up, Crook? He said, hello, love train crew. Let's ride the love train together. Come on, y'all. Let's ride the train together. Ride train, Bobby DDG, One Nation, One Love. What's up, Fred? Uh, Crook? He said, let's get those likes up, everybody. Come on, everybody. Let's get the likes up. Everybody please. hit the like button, please. Let's do that now. Let's do it. Hey, we need the likes in the house. Y'all don't do nothing else for it. Just hit the like button, please. It don't take but one second. That's it, man. Let's do that. Freddie Mason, Ride Train, Bobby DDG, One Nation. Is it Crook Mark? Until the wheels fall off. <laughs> Let it ride the thing, baby. Until the wheels fall off. Let's do this. Ride train by the Murphy. Hey, what's up? What's up? Is it Crook Park? Done. Thank you so much, Murphy. Thank, Thank you so much. You hit that like button. You hit that like button. Terry Fleming, what's up, Terry? Never lost. No, that's Perry. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Fleming said, I, I gave everything away three months ago, thinking my my finances would be in order. I cut out all things that would be that would tie me down here in America. Holding pattern now. Hey man, I hate you. Like, um, there's another person like that that ride a train. She we ain't seen in a while. Kimberly, remember Kimberly, right? One of our angels. She ain't seen her husband the same way. As soon as they got packed up, ready to move to Cebu City, the lockdown came and they've been locked out ever since like three months. They just in the holding pattern. They got everything ready to go to the Philippines, just waiting for everything to open up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're gonna be all right, man. It's just it's just uh just a matter of time, you know. Uh, when you get here, it's gonna be well worth the wait, man. Because you want to come in here, you're gonna feel like a new person. Now, the first few, I would say the first mm, maybe two to three months, you want first you're gonna be happy and glad to be here. I mean, everybody did that. Then you're gonna go to this point where oh missing the USA. <laughs> so far. You go, you gonna you gonna go through that because we all do. Okay. You wanna feel like you wanna go back home, but you missed this, you did that. Then after six months, give yourself six months, Terry. Once you've been on there six months, you're going to recognize that you ain't missing nothing in the USA, but maybe a few friends here and there. And you can talk to them on the internet, you know? But yeah, man, it, it takes a while before you, you got to go to it. It's called a transitional phase, okay? Everybody go. I, I went through it. I wanted to go home. I, like, man, no, no, I want to go home. Mr. U.S., I want to go home. He said, you, he said give yourself some time. See, you need got to get adjusted. You haven't been adjusted yet. I said, I'm adjust. I want to adjust myself home. <laughs> I want to go home. I want to go. I tie these birds and the dog. Hoo -hoo, ah, and then roosters. Oh, go, 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 go. I got tired of this. I'm tired. I'm not used to this. And I took me tired of cold showers, too. I got, it took me a while, man. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while, but I got used to it. And, man, this is the best thing ever happened to me, man. I'm serious. You got to give yourself a chance. You give yourself some time. Give yourself a chance. You're going to be all right. Round train, Bobby D. Lee's D. One Nation. C X seven 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 Carl. What's up, Carl? You all right? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. He said, uh, insurance cheaper outside the U.S. because they don't have everyone using uh, suing for everything. Yeah, that's true. Uh, usually out here, uh, if you hit somebody, they don't have no insurance. You just go on about your business because <laughs> they ain't good on getting that because they ain't got no insurance, they ain't got no monte, they have no money. So, why are you gonna waste your time trying to sue somebody with no monte? You go on about your business, but in the USA, you sue them regardless because you're gonna finally get something, you know. Or if you don't sue your insurance company will sue them, okay. But yeah, the insurance is way, way cheaper out here, guys. So, that's the least of your worries when you come out here. Well, I got a big car insurance, car insurance cheap, man, out here, very cheap. I was surprised when I got here. We got the car. I said, no, we got to get insurance, Lee D. I said, you know, I want to know how much it's going to be. We went down there. I think the first, we didn't get the, we didn't get the top line insurance for first. Our first insurance was the regular, no fault type. We paid 3,000 pesos for a whole year. I said, whoa. That's what we did. Next year, we get, I said, we did move up. If it's only that much, we get the top of the line. We got the 5,000. We don't play, man. Rod Train, Robert Lee D, One Nation. Who we got? Look at, look at Crew Mark. What's up, Crew? He said, he laughed at Freddie Vazor. I'll tell you, man. Freddie Vazor's on there. He never lost the case. PMG, what's up? He said, does car insurance in the Philippines 
offer full coverage like in the union estate. Yeah. yeah, they do. That's what we got, full coverage. Somebody hit you, you hit somebody. I don't think if ours is full coverage. We got Because the coverage. full coverage is more than a hundred thousand. No, it's, no, it's not no more than a hundred thousand. Are you losing your mind? Okay. They cover the, okay, she's talking. I think it depends. She don't know what she's talking about. I'm gonna tell you what it is. She's talking about the coverage, not the cost. You know, when you get insurance, they'll give you a coverage allowance. Okay, the coverage allowance is up to a hundred thousand, which they will cover. It's not the cost of the insurance. Full insurance, full coverage insurance is usually about five to eight thousand per year, down pesos. Okay, that's what she's talking about. Ron Trey, Robert, they the one nation. Murphy, hey, what's up, Murphy? Terry, wow, I'm thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I hate you, man. Uh, Ron Trey, Robert, he the Frank. I mean, let's say Frank. <laughs> Crook Bar, what's up? He said, hey, Murphy. Hey, what's up, Murphy? What's up, brother? What's up, brother? Ryan Trey, Bobby D. Lee Z. Murphy, hey, he said, Crook Bar, hello. <laughs> uh, Terry Fleming, what's up, Terry? He said, yeah, Murphy. I've thought long about this. I have made things on this end tough for myself. I only have rent and groceries to pay. The rest is bank in the bank town. I hear you, man. That's what you do. That's the way... When you see a man do something like that, he's made his mind up. He want to make a change, okay? When you burn the bridges, and that's what he's done. He's burned the bridges on the other side. So he can't get back over there just like that. When you burn them bridges, it's hard to get back. That's what I did. I burned my bridges, man. I didn't burn it immediately. <laughs> I burned my bridges after I was out, because I was, I was like, I had in my mind, if it don't work out, I'm right back. So I, I kept my bridge for a while, right? Cause I had a skate route to get right back to the USA. Cause I didn't know how it was gonna work out. You know, me, you know me, man. I'm always thinking, I oh, we got a plan A, a plan B, you know. Yeah, 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 something like that. So I had a plan a, plan B. And so my plan B involved me going on the back bridge, getting back home. But as we continued to live together and everything worked out fine, I said, no, I don't need no plan B. I'm, it would cost me money to keep my plan B in place because my plan B involved having a home in the USA, which I had to pay a note. And thank goodness I had put somebody in there that was paying the note me. I'm to pay, paying the rent. I used the money to pay the note. But that gave out. And then I had to find another tenant. And they tried to mess out and said, okay, that's time for me to live. Burn that bridge. So I burnt that bridge. How did I burn the bridge? I sold the house. I got some good money out of that house, too. I sold the house, man, and then I burned that bridge. So this is where I'm at. This is my home. You know, I have a home in the USA no more. I burned the bridge. When you burn the bridge. White house. Well, For sure. It's not my <laughs> She said the White House is my home. White House ain't not my home. That's Code 45 and me will never coexist in the same space. <laughs> I tell you about me, me. One nation. <laughs> Who we got? Murphy, hey, what's up, Murphy? He said a salesman tried to sell me a Corvette recently for just fourteen hundred a month for sixty months. Fourteen hundred? I think that's a lot of Monte, Monte. <laughs> nah, man. I don't play that. Uh, uh. For sixty months, that's over five years. Nah. Uh, uh. Dude, you did the right thing, man. You don't need that Corvette that bad. If you need a new car, get a new car, but don't get no Corvette for fourteen hundred a month. That's too much. You want to budget yourself. If you want, if you want a fixed income, you want to get a nice car. Get you a Toyota, uh, 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 um, Toyota. Or oh, Mazda, Honda, get you something that's small, economical. That's what I'm never like. I, I've, I've had a one big car in my life. I had a Lincoln Town Car. I had a Lincoln Town Car. And uh, that was a nice car, man. It was nice, man. But it has some nice notes, too. That's what, that's the last <laughs> new car I bought. I was like, I'll never know more. But uh, yeah, get you a nice economical car with a, not a big old gas tank, a small gas tank. And you want to get one that's sturdy. Because, you know, a lot of the small cars are not that sturdy. But the Nissans and the Toyotas, Hondas are decent cars. Get you one of them cars, man, and bring your note down to maybe 300, 400 a month. That's, that's, that's doable. Ryan Train by the Lizzie One Nation. Crook Mark, what's up, Crook? He said, I too pay cash for all my vehicles as well, Bobby. I'm very frugal with my money because, besides, the used ones do the same thing as the new ones, and that's to get to you from point A to point B. My man, Crook Mark is my man. You hear me? He got we got the same mentality when it comes to cars. I don't play that. You know, new are you tell me it's new all I want? I don't got that new car spell, sir. I don't care nothing but no new car spell. I can buy some spray. <laughs> I want me a car that's economical, go get me where I need to go. I don't I don't have the profile and style. I don't need the best. I need a reliable, dependable vehicle. Okay. And it's gonna within my budget. 
And if I got to pay cash for it, I want to pay cash. I'm tired. I paid. I bought a new car. I don't want to pay no more new car prices. I'm done with that stuff. Give me a reliable car that can run and keep me going where I need to go. I'm going to keep it up, keep it, make it run, and I'm going to pay cash. That's what I do. Ryan Chain, Bobby, at least these one nation. Brother, hey, this is Terry. Yeah, that's it, man. Ryan Chain, Bobby, at least these. Steven Rogers. What's up, Steve? What's the name? Hello. Steven Rogers. Oh, she got it right, yeah. <laughs> like Kenny Rogers, right? Yeah, Kenny Rogers. <laughs> no, she's not. I'm messing up now. <laughs> What's up, Steven? He's a good boy to buy me. 320 a.m. Steven's in London, what? y'all. He's in London, England, and he woke up just for the show. It's 11. Sorry to wake you up. 11 04 a.m. here. Uh, but yeah. He, he's in London, but he likes the show. He'll get up every so often to, to see us, man. It's cool, so good to see you, Steven. Glad you made it this morning. Ryan Chain, Bobby Lee's in One Nation. Hey, hey. what's up, Murphy? He said, Terry Fleming, I'm banking 80% of my income. I'm serious like you, brother. Hey, man, you see somebody banking 80%, they are serious. That means they're living on a shoestring budget. They don't have to go out there and buy this and buy that. He's living on the basics. And that's the smart way to live. Live within your means, not beyond your means. When you live beyond your means, you're going to get into financial trouble. There was a time when I lived beyond my means. Okay, I know. I don't tell you nothing I don't know about. I know about this. I lived beyond my means for a long time, and I wound up having to file bankruptcy. Okay? Yeah, I found bankruptcy. That's not the end of the world. But again, after I, and I found the one where you have to pay back. There's two types. One, you don't pay nothing back, and one you got to pay. I found the one where I had to pay back. I paid them people off without the interest part of it, but I get that everybody got paid off. And I learned my lesson. And I, I worked my way, my credit was zero, pretty much. I don't work my way back up. I have A1 credit now because I've turned a new leaf. I don't pay that. Let me on your means. I don't live off credit, I live off cash. Okay, when I don't have my outgoal, it's always less uh, than my income. That's the way I list where we live, and we can't pay cash for it. We'll pay credit, but we'll pay it, we'll pay it off as soon as the credit card comes in. We don't say that we pay that sucker off. I don't play that. Man. You smart man, Murphy. Ryan Train Bobby at least he one nation. Poor, oh. poor. He said I drove in Manila. It was crazy. I could handle it. Look a lot, a lot getting used to. I used to drive. I used to. USA driving, it works for me. Okay, you good man, Paul. He can drive another. I can't do I will not do it. I ain't gonna try. I looked, I since to seen too many bad incidents out there. So if you drive in Cebu, it's crazy, but it's crazy er in Manila. Okay, I, I will not do it in Manila. And I'm, I, but the good part about it is I won't live in Manila, so I'll never have to do it in Manila. Okay, I will stay right here in Cebu. Right, Trey, by the least D. Mervin, hey, what's up, Mervin? He said, after seeing how people drive there, man. It's a free fall, yeah. It's, it's, I, talk, I call it an organized chaos because everybody does. I told you how the Filipinos don't um, like rules, right? They always find a way to do what? Get around the rules, through the rules, over the rules, under breaking the rules, rules. Break the rules. They always do. <laughs> so when you come out here, you're going to see them breaking the rules on the road constantly, constantly. Drive them on the sidewalk. All kind of crazy stuff, man. So what is he doing? You, you got to get used to it. You guys, okay, then that's how you do it. And just follow your lane. Stay in your lane and be consistent. And the main thing you do when you come out here, you have to watch the bikers, the motorcycles, because they drive crazy and they come from nowhere. And all of a sudden, you got to put on brakes. And people, another thing, bicycles. People ride on bicycles. Remember that time we were riding with our real estate agent mm -hmm. and a little boy came right in front of us? Yeah. She, she all came. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, a little boy with a bike. I came right in front of the real estate agent. We were driving for quick speed. She almost hit the little boy. And it wouldn't have been her fault. He just came from nowhere. She came that close. The car said, that close to hitting the boy. And the boy did like this. He said, <laughs> and he drove off. I said, what's wrong with that boy? <laughs> Crazy, man. Stuff like that they do all the time. That's why I don't drive out here that much. I let Lisa D. I said, man, I'm tired of you. Crazy folk. I let Lisa D do most. I drive them when I don't feel like it. I'm like, I'm like, I let Lisa D. She loves driving that crazy style. I'm riding train by me, Lisa D. One day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, she had crazy. Uh, Terry Flynn, what's up, Terry? She said, there's, there's nothing like driving in Miami, a smelting pot of international fools. Hell, hell bent on denting your, your whip. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, I tell you, I drove in Miami. I went to I mean, Miami Beach. It's nice out there, man. You got to wear some shades in Miami Beach. You know why, right? You want to girls, you be like, 
you, your neck be hurting when you get through. <laughs> oh my God, I hurt my neck. <laughs> but yeah, I've been to Miami. But I drove Miami. Yeah, they drive crazy out there too. Places I tell you, I'm to Washington, D.C., look out for them. New York City, look out for them. City. And uh, there's another one. What? What? I think it's someplace in Virginia. Uh, those areas right there, you better watch yourself because they drive crazy out there. You I'm not mean? going to Baraka also because you didn't have shade. <laughs> I have the two pairs of shades when I go to Baraka. <laughs> I have some blinders on. I can't look to the left. I can't look to the left. I can't look to the right. I have to look straight forward. Okay. <laughs> right train, Bobby needs in one nation. Who we got? Mervin, hey, what's up, Mervin? He said, Terry for them is laughing, man. <laughs> Ryan Trey, Bobby needs in one nation. Who we got? Eddie Jackson. What's up, Eddie? He said, let's get them likes up, everybody. Hey, thank you. Let's get those likes up. Just like Eddie, Eddie said, man. Y'all, please, hit the likes, please. Ryan Trey, Bobby, listening. Michael Coffee. We need some coffee. What's Mike? He said, hello. Uh, when I would visit the Philippines, Manila, Cebu, Davao, Hilo, I only sent, I only rent scooters. Make sure you wear an, an, a helmet. Uh, some crazy drivers from there. Like, yeah, man. You can rent a car out here or you can rent a scooter. Uh, I remember when Chris was out here uh, a few months ago, Chris rented a scooter. And uh, that was his first time. He was, I was shocked. He knew how to ride it too. He didn't have to get trained. He said he had rode, rid a bike back in the USA for a while. So he was already trained. But that's how he did. He and, uh, what's Mel Monica? Melody. He and Melody, which is his girlfriend, they rode everywhere on the school. They left their helmet and it. Oh, Starting <laughs> day. <laughs> tell the people business. She's trying to tell the people. Hey, man, she's trying to tell the people business. I ain't tell, I ain't telling their business. Yeah. Man. No, I don't ever left your your helmet in the bike on the bike. Because they will still they will steal your helmet. She trying to tell people business. I don't know. I, 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 no, I'm trying to tell those tell the people. Don't tell people business, Lisa D. He, if he wants the people to know that, he'll tell the people. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. She like telling people stuff. Anyway, uh, well, I'm gonna tell her since she already told him. So I, sorry, but she, yeah. Hey, what happened, y'all? What it happened? Or, nah. <laughs> I say you want to tell. But you sure I know. <laughs> what happened, y'all? They came out. We were supposed to meet at the mall, right? So we met the mall, and he came up there. I said, "Man, where your helmet? You know, he said, I said, "Where your helmet? I know you rode the bike. Where your helmet? He said, "Oh, we left him on the bike." I said to myself, left him on the bike, but I didn't tell him that. And then when they came back to their bike, guess what? The helmet was gone. Cause you don't leave your helmet on the bike in the Philippines. You take it with you and you carry your helmet wherever you go. Cause people will take it. Helmets cost some money out here too. And they had to buy their helmets back cause the helmets were rented. So yeah, you gotta be careful with that when you rent a scooter. You gotta be careful where you take your helmet. Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Michael Coffey. He says, uh, "Hi, I'll I'll retire." I I'll, re I'll rent a scooter to go to the province areas in Cebu, like Bugu. A car can't make some of the dirt narrow, narrow roads out there. Scooters better. From okay. Nurse Mike. Uh, Nurse Mike, the, the roads have improved, so the car will be fine. The roads are uh, not like they used to be since the turd got in office. Most of the roads on the way to Bugu and Medellin. Smooth and paved and smooth sailing. Now, used to I remember the dirt roads you're talking about. There are there's no very few dirt roads out there. Very very few that you'll be surprised when you get back here and ride this scooter. It's going to be smooth sailing because the turf they got in the office, all the roads are paved. Man, you're gonna be you're gonna be surprised. Ride train, Bobby D. Lee, One Nation, Michael Coffee. He said, Bobby D. Uh, God bless all of the guys, men on the low train today. Keep the faith. Stay positive, Nurse Mike. Thanks so much, Nurse Mike. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Ryan Train, Bobby Lisi, Joshua Moore. What's up, Joshua? Yeah, I mean, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see ya. He said, Wow, the AC went out on your car and you live in the Philippines. I know you had to get your AC fixed quick. I will be sweating like a shack in the Lakers game. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, we have, you know, we can, Play that, man. I gotta get my AC. You got to have AC out here if you come in the Philippines. I mean, if you're a Filipino, you used to know AC because a lot of people that are Filipino, they'll ride their car with no AC because they used to it. They used to heat. And you just roll the wind down and be going. Mm. But me, I can't play with that. I, I don't like that heat out here. And so when I cannot ride a car with no AC. But it's one of the things when I did that list, one of my list, one of the things on my list about getting a car, AC must, it must have. If you come out here, and you American or from West, you have the book on your list, you'd be must AC. Oh, one other thing I, I should have told y'all, uh, when you come out here and you look at your cars, 
most keep in mind most of the cars are a manual driven okay they are stick right <laughs> so if you don't know how to drive a stick you're gonna be in trouble buddy <laughs> y'all know how to drive a stick if you but but you can request an automatic okay automatic cost more monte hunte out here plus most of the cars out here are manual drive now we have an automatic because i requested i mean that was one of my things to have an automatic and we bought it from this individual uh which was uh her, her brother's boss i said is it automatic he said yeah, it is that's what made me come out and looked at it and so most of the cars out here new cars used cars majority of the cars out here are auto uh manual okay stick i know how to drive a stick the first car i learned off of stick so i know how to drive but a lot of guys but it is better to ride a um, um what's that automatic when it is traffic you know when it is a lot of traffic you don't need manual um it's more work with a manual you have to use the stick and then you got to have a clutch y'all know what a clutch is right you use your clutch you're on the left foot that takes the uh, go cause the car to shift gears on an automatic the transmission causes the gears to shift automatically that's why you have an automatic transmission versus on the uh, on the uh manual car you have a transmission but it's not an automatic it's a manual transmission where you shift the gears with your stick and the clutch and you have to get coordinated so i, I learned when you when you learn how to ride a a car, a car with a clutch it's automatic you never forget it i can ride one today because it's like riding a bike you never forget but uh i want to let y'all know come out here try to get you a car most of the cars will be manual transmission stick it'll be cheaper if you want one that's an automatic you're gonna have to pay more money because there's not there's very few automatics out here on the road okay ride train by the in one nation who we got Terry flim he said i can live comfortable with what i receive now but i'm stuck in the last process of my service connection claims by okay that's good man um so you're saying i i can live okay with like what i got i'm fine with it i can live real good but I have to wait until they start to see about your claim. Look here, let me give you a suggestion. Let's say, I'm going to give you, for example, okay? I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation. I understand. Listen. If you do not get your claim approved in USA, right? We don't, we don't want that. But, but let's say it happens, okay? All right. Here's what you can do. Suggestion. Come to the Philippines, right? Go to Manila, right? File your claim again. Somebody I know did that. The claim was denied in the USA. Came here, filed a claim, proved. So you have options, Terry Fleming. You're not limited. You have options when you move to the Philippines because it's two different boards. That's one for the USA, and you're now here on the governing board of the Philippines. So you can re resubmit. Just keep all your paperwork and stuff. And you can see what, why they denied you. Fix that why they denied you stuff, okay? And then send it in in the philippines you'll probably get that claim approved this guy i know did that same thing denied in the usa came here resubmitted the claim got approved 100 telling you man just do that if you if, if get turned out ride train bobby lives one nation remember hey what's up Mervin? he said lisa lisa d lisa d lisa d <laughs> what's up man yes yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right uh lamont what's up lamont he said i try, I, I, I ride trike and Take grab taxi when the yeah, that's a good option. If you don't want to drive out here, take and grab and ride the trike. Trike is cheap, man, real cheap. Grab can cost you some monte. But riding the trike, if you're just going a short area, short distance, get your trike. Just get just like a guy with a little bike and you can pay you, or you have a motorcycle and a, and a cab on the side, just take it wherever the want to go. But it's cheaper than getting a grab. Uh Robin Morris, what's up, Robin? Robert? Good to see you, good to see you, good to see ya. He said, hello, Bobby, he's a dude, too. Okay, I got, you know, I got to see his new sign. He got a new, I, I pop, got to see what pop. pop, pop, pop goes a weasel. <laughs> oh, so good to see you, Robin. Always good to see you, Robin. Him on our regular. Good to see you, man. Rob Chain, Bobby, Lizzie. Remember, hey, what's up, man? He said, if you want to see crazy scooter rides, go to China. <laughs> China and India, too. And, uh, you know, Africa. Hey, man, scooter riders are all over, man. They drive crazy, man. They own on the road and you better watch out for them but you know what that's one of the reasons i stopped driving as much because i like man i was getting crazy i'm, like, man, I'm tired of these people turning in in front of me and i'm i'm, 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 I'm letting these 
I let Lisa D drive most of the time. Sometimes I drive, but I don't like it, man. I get, I, I, I drive when I get ready, though. I say, my time, I'm driving today. And she'll say, you rub my feet, girl. You got to rub my feet with her feet. <laughs> but I came by the One Nation. Remember, uh, Eddie Jackson, he said, Curtis Mayfield was, was the man. Yeah, man. Curtis has Superfly. I thought he won, that. I thought he won an Oscar for that, but the best song. Freddie did, yeah, Freddie did. I remember that Freddie did. Move on up. People get people get ready for the train is coming. I changed it up. He don't have that lyric like that. I, I put that in. Don't think, don't think it. Ah, it just get on book or need it love. Ooh, ah, sweet, sweet love. He don't have that. I did that's Bible D right now. Rush Harry Marie Lee G one day. Uh Gregory Cunningham. Gregory Cunningham. Gregory Cunningham, what's up, Cunningham? He said, hi, Bobby, and Lisa D, how are you two doing? I see the lockdown is back up. That might be Kimberly Cunningham. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and I see I will I will not be able to come to the Philippines in July. I got my airfare, but I need to put it on hold. I hate you, man. Now, I would, I would say wait till the end of the year. And the first, or the first quarter of next year, everything should be yeah. straight by the end. But it's too much up and down. One day we ECQ, next day we GCQ. Now we back on ECQ. It's too much up and down, man. It's too much flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. I want to, I want some st wherever I go in this world, I want to make sure there's some what stability. Okay, I want some stability because I don't want to run into somebody flip flopping every day. Flip flop, flip. I don't want that. If I'm going to a foreign country. I want to make sure what I'm getting into. Okay. So wait till it stabilizes towards the end of the year or the first quarter of next year. And I know that's inconvenience, but that's the best thing I would suggest right now. Rock Train, Bobby D. Lisa D. Great Red Cunningham. He said, Bobby D. Lisa D. I am really want to buy a house in the Philippines so I can come back and forth for the next five years. Hey, that's a good idea, man. Um, a lot of people want to rent. Okay. Most people want to most expats that come out here to live, they don't care not but buying no house. They don't rent, man. I don't rent. Me, I would rent if I was going to live here short term, uh, maybe six months, three months. I'd probably rent. But I'm here long term. Why would I rent? It, that, for me, now, this is my thing. This is my thing. I know you guys don't agree. Most of you guys don't agree. This is my thing. If I'm going to live someplace long term, I want to get the maximum benefits of my place where I live. Lisa Dews, she schooled me on this. She said, you wasting your money on rent. She said, if you're buying it, you're investing in it, and your money is increasing as you live here year to year. She talked to me, but I already knew it because I'm a real estate guy. But she, she, she's smart. So that's what we decided to buy. Brown Train, Bobby and Lizzie, One Nation. Sincerely, yeah. Angel in the house. Hello. Angel in the house. Angel in the house. What's up, Angel? She said, uh, two, two, riding. Two, two, riding on a little train from the start. How's our queen, Angel Lisa D? I'm good. With King Bobby D. <laughs> king Bobby D. Uh, one, one, of one of my list is that. One of my dream lists is that car and learn to drive. Okay. That's what that's one of her goals, one of her dream lists. She wants to get a car and she wants to learn how to drive. You yeah, you it. better know how to drive sincerely, because Martha Hayes need a driver. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, she's a Merva Hayes need a driver. You might be a driver, Lisa. Uh, yeah, sincerely, lady driver. <laughs> Merva Hayes can teach you how to drive, and then you can get you. You can drive him as he gets a car. He buy the car. Let him buy the car, sincerely, okay? <laughs> and then you say, okay, you not bought the car. I drive the car. I'm your driver. <laughs> yeah, it'll work out. Ride a train, Bobby Lee's in one nation. Like a coffee. Need some coffee. He said, uh, hi. In Manila, Cebu Davao, it takes some time getting used to no traffic lights on a lot of roads and streets in the Philippines. Be very careful on your driving. It. Yeah, it goes without saying. You guys that come in here and you want to drive, it's okay. But you have to be careful. It's not like the USA where everybody obeys the rules. No, 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 no. There's no rule. There's the rule book and there's the written, there's the written rules and then there's the unwritten rules. This people out here that drive go more with the unwritten rules than the written rules, okay? So you have to learn the unwritten rules. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. The written rule is when you're driving straight forward, right? And you're getting ready to turn left, right? You're gonna turn left. You have to wait till the traffic that's coming this way stops, right? So you can then turn, make that left turn. 
not here. <laughs> you don't wait for nothing. If you get an opening, you don't. And then if I'm behind you, if I'm behind you making that turn, I don't wait. Because normally in the USA, this person was behind you turn, they wait for their turn, right? No. You like a train ride. When they turn, <laughs> you turn. Everybody turns. And that's like that's not the rules, but that's the unwritten rules. Things like that. Things like that happen all the time. When you I had to learn that rule. Because when I would, okay, let's say I'm driving, right? And I need to make a left turn. I make my turn. Oh no, I'm driving. I need to make a left turn. Some and somebody else in front of me, they make their turn, right? I will stop to wait for my turn. People be bumping me, bump, 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 behind me, right? Because they want me to go on. I didn't know. So I had to learn that, man. Ryan trained by me, DC, One Nation. Remember, hey, he said, sincere, sincerely. So you want to learn like a gangster? <laughs> you want to lean like a gangster? <laughs> you want to get, she want to do a gangster lean. <laughs> she don't know what that means. I think, sincerely, do you know what gangster lean means? I don't think she know. Did she think, think she I know? don't know. Do you know? No. <laughs> she don't know either. <laughs> I, I told her I told her 15 million times. She don't remember. Ryan Train Bob D. Gregory Cunningham. He's a Bobby D. C. Can I buy a house in the Philippines so I can go back and forth for the next seven years and move for good? Um, because I I I buy a car in the Philippines and can I rent a car when I come visit? Yeah. Very good yeah. question. Let's take each question. First question is, can I buy a house in the Philippines? Okay. Here's what you can do. Okay, I had a thing about buying a houses in the Philippines a few days ago. You can, or yesterday, whether it was yesterday. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, you can buy a house in the Philippines with certain conditions. Number one, you can buy what's called they call houses here house and house and lot, the land and the house. They call house and lot. A foreign man cannot buy a house and lot or a house by himself. Okay, and that's against the law. You have to be married to a Filipina. In order for you to purchase a house, it has to be in both of your names. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you can do, Gregory, is you can buy a condo, condominium in your name. You don't have to be married to a Filipino to buy a condominium. Okay. Yeah. That's the law. But if you want a house and lot, you have to be married to a Filipino to buy it. Or what some people do, they don't marry a Filipina. They get it put in the Filipina's name. She buys it. They give her the money. And, but you have to trust that first because a lot of people get messed up. But uh, I'm just showing you the options. Okay. But you can buy a condo in your name uh, with no problem. Now, third, second question was uh, go back and forth seven years and move to be a, can I buy a car? And you can buy a car. You can buy a car in your name only in the Philippines. You can do that. That's not a problem. And can I rent a car when I become visit? You can rent a car as well as buy a car. And when you come here, let's tell, let me tell you about the driver's license situation, guys. Those of you who want to drive here. All right. So let's say you're a driver in the USA right now. Okay. You got your driver's license and it's valid driver's license. That's all you need to come here to the Philippines to get licensed. You need a valid driver's license from your country. You show them that valid driver's license. You pay them to get you a Philippine license. You retain your drive, your state driver's license and you retain your Philippine license. Gate. Now, to get the license out of here. You have to take an eye test, which is a vision test, and you have to take a drug test, okay? And you have to take what they call a physical, where they take your blood pressure and all like that. You have to pay for that. Once you pay for that, then you can go get your, you pay for to get the license too as well. You can get your Philippine license and take the picture and all like that, okay? So, and if you're a foreigner, you can use your foreign license for three months in here. Very good. Very good. Very good point, Lisa. She did, she did good. Yeah. yeah, you can use it. You can, let's say you don't want to get a Philippine license, but you want to be here for a while, right? You can drive on your foreign state license. Let's say I'm from Georgia. I drove on my license from Georgia for three months before I got my Filipino license. Okay. You can have the right to drive on, your, drive on your foreign license for three months. After that three months, you can catch you driving on that license and get a ticket. He said, that's what I'm driving, Bobby. I told you the crew. Hey, you're a frugal guy like me. I, I drove a Honda. I had one Toyota in my life. I think it was a it was a Toyota wagon. I think it was a Corolla. I don't know. It was a long time ago back in the 80s. And I never bought another Toyota because like I like Hondas so much. I like I love Hondas. I like Fords. I like Chevys. And uh I like Hondas a lot. Those are the cars I've always had. I've never had anything other than a Ford, Chevy. 
or a Honda. Benz. I'm sorry, I take that back. I had a Black Lincoln. man walking. <laughs> I had a Lincoln town car. I had that one time. And I never had a Mercedes, but I, I like those cars. I never wanted to be too high for me. But um, I stick with the USA cars and maybe for Honda's Japanese cars they run. Honda's are easy to fix and Toyota's are too. Very easy to fix. And they don't give you a lot of breakdowns. That's why I like those cars. They don't break down a lot. They last forever. If you keep if you keep your oil and lube job, you're gonna last forever. Rob Train, Bobby Liz D. Eddie Jackson, she said, he said, sincerely, how are you tonight, my dear? <laughs> I tell you, Bobby, this is Terry Fleming. He said, Hello, Angel, my dear. <laughs> she said, yeah. she said, Want that classic car to drive, my face? Eddie Jackson, I'm good here having a morning night. <laughs> She's having a morning night. She's in between, y'all. Yeah? Greg, 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 if I was 62, my SSI would be $1,875 a month. Is that okay to live in the Philippines? But I might wait till I am 67 to get my SSI to get more, but I have my 403. 403 retirement. Okay, uh, very good question, Gregory. Uh, if you want to live off eighteen hundred seventy-five dollars a month, that's you can do that here. You, it'd be tough to do that in USA, uh, but here that's good money, man. You're talking about you're going to a country where one dollar, one U.S. dollar, gives you about fifty of their pesos. So your money's going to spread further here, Gregory, than it does in the USA. You can live off of that eighteen seventy-five a month and live like I won't go to live like a king, but you can live very good off of that money by itself. But from what I'm seeing, you have a 4013 retirement account as well. So that 1875 plus that 403, man, you really look good. You don't have no words out here, man. So if you want to do it at 62, do your thing, man. You got yeah. the way. You might not, not wait until 65. You might not, you might not <laughs> get there. You know, I'm not trying to be <laughs> negative or nothing, but get get it while you can. They, you know what? You know 45 and off of right code 45, he might cut it out. I'm, I'm telling you, this just Life is too short. Do your thing, man. If you can get that Monte Hunte, get it right when you can. Ride train, Bobby Liz D. One Nation. Sincerely. She said, Remember, hey, if you would be riding with me on Lamborghini, I would be a gangster. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she want to be a gangster in a Lamborghini. Doing so the gangster lean. She going to do the gangster uh, lean. <laughs> yeah, man. Murphy, Murphy, you want to take up on that? Get you a Lamborghini. Y'all can do the gangster lean together. Ron Jane, Bobby Lee D. Gregory Cunningham. He said, Lee Zee, Bobby. Is Antipolo City a good place to buy a house or Cebu? A nice place to buy a house. I can tell you about Cebu. Cebu is very nice. I have heard about Antipolo. Antipolo is a good place to live as well. It's clean. It's outside of uh, Manila and it's small and it's a nice place as well. I haven't been there, but I've heard about it. Uh, Cebu, I can tell you firsthand, it's nice here and depending on where you go. Okay. Ride train, Bobby D. At least in one nation. Baby, hey, what's Murphy? He says, sincerely, you know, I would love to be a gangster to afford a Lamborghini. With you, my dear. <laughs> you want to do a gangster lean with sincerely and hoo-hoo. <laughs> yeah, right, Trey Bobby Lee's the one nation. He's Terry Fleming. He said, My claim, my claim are now in the hands of BVA in Washington, DC. If I'm denied, I'll have to go in front of a judge in Washington. Hey man, do whatever you, whatever it takes, man. Bring your lawyer with you, bring all your records with you, and you probably get it, you probably get. Uh, you might not get food 100%, but you get some of that money. Do take it to the nth degree. And if you get denied, like I told you, if you get denied here, take it to the Philippines. And I guarantee you're going to get some food. Watch. I'm saying, man, I ain't playing. I know. I told you somebody did the same thing. I'm telling you, they got denied in USA, brought the same case here, filed it here. Because they're more lenient to the to the people, the VA veterans out here in the Philippines than they are in the USA. Ryan Train, Bob D. One day. Murphy, hey, what's up, Murphy? He's at least D. Ain't nothing rice. Ain't nothing that. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing nice. Okay. Ryan Train Bobby Lee Z. Um Joshua Moore. He said, Murphy, you were going to pay fourteen hundred a month for sixty months for COVID. You must got that bread, bro. <laughs> you must have a six-figure income. <laughs> Murphy doing good for himself, man. 
Murphy had a business, retired from his business. He got money coming in. Hey, Murphy doing good, man. He got the Monte on it. He got the Monte. Well, I don't think Murphy want to be paying on 1400 for that. Uh-uh. He's smarter than that. He ain't crazy. Roger Jerry <laughs> released the coordination. Trent Knight. Trent Knight. What's up, Trent? He said, good morning, Bobby D and Miss D. Good morning. They arrested the cop, shot the brother in the land. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. I haven't been looking at the news because I've been doing too much work. He said, arrested the cop, shot the brother in Atlanta for murder. And the other cop speaking against the cop said, kick the brother after he shot him dead. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know he kicked him. What? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. I hope the charges stick to it. You kick a man here and he dead, that's low down. And that's dirty. That means he meant to kill that man. He meant to do it. So he needs to he, somebody meant to give him some time too. They need to give him some time. He killed a black man and kicked him when he was dead. That dirty low down. Whew, don't get me started, man. Don't get me started with that. That's some of the worst thing you can do to me and say to me about he can take a man's life and then he's gonna kick him. Mm-mm. Mm, no. Throw the book at him. He need to be under, he should never been on the police force. And then can you imagine? He got caught with this one. Can you imagine how many he done beat up and killed and stuff and didn't get caught with? You know? Can you imagine how people done jacked up and didn't get caught, didn't get caught on the camera with it? I'm glad they got him. Let justice be served. Ryan Train Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. Murphy, hey, what's up, Murphy? He said, you sure more. I asked that. Did he? I asked that. I asked that. Did he escape from the loony bin? <laughs> he asked, he said, did you escape from the loony bin, man? You want me to pay $1,400 a month for 60 months for a car at? <laughs> crazy man. I told you, Murphy don't go out like that. He got a, he got a logical mind. He ain't crazy. Ride train by the least. <laughs> I would have laughed at her too, Murphy. Come talking about fourteen hundred a month for sixty months. It must be crazy. Ride train by the least. I didn't read that. Ah. Uh. He said, "Ha ha, Murphy Hayes." <laughs> Ride train by the least. One day she Greg coming in. Cunningham, he said, Bobby D and Lizzie, I have three rentals homes. Should I keep them when I move to the Philippines? Okay, good question. I tell you, I was in a rental property. I tell you, I'm a jack of all trades. Though. I had five rental houses at one time when I was living in out of Atlanta. Then my job caused me to move different places, move different places. And I had to manage those houses while I was living elsewhere. Okay, even when I moved to the Philippines, I still had my one house and I had rented it out. I used this rental property and I managed it long distance from the Philippines. It, could, it caused to be the first tenant is okay, but the second tenant was like, oh, every time something tore up and they came to find out they don't want to tear it up, but I got to fix it. All kinds of crazy stuff like that. So if you are, uh, what I would suggest, the two options you have. Number one, keep the rental properties, get your reliable rental property, what, manager, okay? Find a good rental property manager. If you want to be in the Philippines, they can manage everything. You give them permission to do what you need to do. They won't charge you for it. They have to repair this, repair that. You're going to have to pay extra. But uh, get you a good property manager. You can keep the properties and uh, it'll be fine. But you have to get really. I had a property manager when I first moved here to the Philippines and uh, they were not reliable. They were letting the tenant do everything. And then I think every time they told, well, you need this, need this, more change to the change. I said, wait a minute. Are you checking on these people to make sure they're taking care of the property? I got rid of them and I started managing myself and I had to get rid of kicking people out, but they went right. But the second option is sell them, sell our properties. Okay. It's going to, you may have some, it's going to bring you down as far as your taxes. Cause now you're getting, you're getting benefits of having a rental property. You're getting deductions from your taxes. When I had those five properties, I didn't pay. No, I think most I paid one year's hundred dollars because I had a lot of write-offs. I was like Donald Trump. Don't pay zero taxes. <laughs> But that's what you do. They, they give you so many uh, dis discounts and stuff for being a business owner. And that's a rental business. You get deduction. You're probably getting it right now, some of it. So you're going to have to pay, pay more tax if you get rid of the properties. So those are two decisions you have to make. You have to make those judgment decisions. I gave you your what? Options. And then you have to decide well, which options you want. Keep these houses or, or maintain them, live over it. Now, you, the best option is to keep the houses if at all possible. And then in that instance, you would have to get a valid, we have time now to find a valid, a good, reliable uh, property, what manager. You have the time to look for, okay? And it's hard to find a good one, okay? And then he can sell that if he like to live in here. And then he have a property also here. And then he said all done already here. This, this is the time you can sell your rental property outside she said you can live here rent, rent out for a while and if you like it just like i did i liked it so much i burnt my bridges 
I, I sold a property. Now, when you yeah, tell you have a choice, you, know, you, you like it, you know, you're going to be here, sell it. You know, Ryan Train, Bobby Lizzie, One Nation. This is. I thank you guys for being so good to us today. We appreciate you. Much love to you, everybody who gave today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. But those of you who gave today, very well. We thank you so much. We appreciate, appreciate you. Uh, go to closing comments, please, D. Closing comments, not clips. Comments. Oh. You did the same thing yesterday. Remember that, D? I said, go to my closing comments. She went to the clips. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Hit the like button, y'all, please. Please. Our Facebook fan page called what? The Philippines Fuck Connections. <laughs> <laughs> like the page when you get a chance. Next one, please. If you have, if you're viewing the videos and record a replay, remember to let the ads play because if you do, we get a little change of change, change, change. Okay. Right, train, right, at least D. If, you, if you wish to donate through PayPal, you can dial, you can use our PayPal donation address, bdix004 at gmail.com. We have a free Android app. It's called the Philippines Expat Lifestyle. Download that app on your Android phone. And you can pull up every one of our videos and broadcasts from the beginning until now. You don't have to go to YouTube to save you a lot of time. Uh, 800-827-1000. That is the number for the VA. If you're a veteran and you need information regarding your benefits, you can call that number and somebody should be able to help you. Now we're going to do our closing Clips. Clips, Lisa D. Clips. A towering presence. Run like the wind. Be a king or a queen. Life in the Philippines. All right, guys, we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. go. This is Bobby D. And Lisa D. Saying take care. God bless. And peace. See ya. Wouldn't want to be here. Nah, just play it.